That's most of my stories start out with. Well, there was this gal. When I started doing the Renaissance Festival, mm -hmm. I decided I wanted a chainmail shirt mm -hmm. because I looked at them and I thought, oh, they look cool. At that point in time, I decided that I couldn't afford one, so I started making mine. And I have to laugh because before before I got this one finished, I sold my first chainmail bikini, mm -hmm. and that became more important to have the fun making chain mail bikinis here and there or and eventually of course the shirt got finished or we wouldn't be having that part of the conversation uh, this is the typical pattern this is a European foreign one everybody makes that so when I was first starting I was, I'm going to experiment with some other patterns and one of the other patterns I exper experimented with is an oriental six in one which makes triangles and I went out to see a friend of mine at Nina's bar, and I dropped a sample of the European four and one, and the Oriental six and one, on the bar. I was sitting there chatting with him, and this gal walks up, picks up the Oriental six and one, looks at it, and goes, "What do you think?" <laughs> and I looked over at my buddy, and he goes, "I'm making my shirt out of this. I'm making hers out of that." She paid for it the first night, with additional tips. What I still have not figured out is why I haven't sold more of them to bar hops. Uh, basically what it has come down to is cosplay characters. It's where most of them go out to. And I, I have made Mother Nature outfit a couple times, which the whole green. The very first outfit I made, first time I started working with scales, I had seen them advertised before and I was worried about trying to make them and I just stayed away. And gal came up, she said, I need this. I, I, I really, this would be really cool to make. So, push came to shove, and I showed her where the website was, and she saw the scales. And I made her a uh, reptilian outfit. The biggest advantage to working with scale mail, and the models who want to shoot in something different for their portfolio. Mm -hmm. This is PG-13. I can't see through it. This isn't PG-13. Mm -hmm. It dates back far more than the 16th century. It's the Romans had versions of chainmail also, but what I have come to play with now was never historically correct. The scales, actually, they were made uh, popular and brought into the world by D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons game. Now there are a handful of people that make scale mail armor. It's all a fantasy armor of some sort or another. But the chainmail, different points in time, historically correct. Technically, the, the shirt that I'm wear, wearing here is not correct because the rings aren't riveted shut. Uh, when you stop to think about how long this took, figure about two hours for every inch of length of shirt. If you go to rivet that, you're talking an hour for each ring to rivet the ring shut. That's a labor of love there. Uh, Something like that. When you go back to that 16th century, uh, 16th, 14th century in there somewhere, uh, there would have been a crew of people working on riveting it together. The people who wore the shirts had to be very, very wealthy to be able to afford the people. And you talk about the recycling crazes now and being good to earth. Armor off of a battlefield, it would always be cleaned up. You would see people with patches from having rebuilt their other armor. Yeah, what it does, it protects you differently what most people will expect. You take the sword, which would be a slicing blow. You take the slice out of it. So instead of cutting me, it strikes me. And if you hit me with a baseball bat, the chainmail doesn't protect me. The sword is lighter than a bat. So when it comes in, what would have been a slicing blow, which would have gutted me sure it's still gonna hurt but I'm gonna pick it up and or I'm gonna keep coming okay. so it certainly not a foolproof armor the chain mail will give in every direction the scale mail won't give the other direction so it would actually be better armor but since making those scales uh, medieval time would have been uh, prohibitive most women didn't fight. 
if you extrapolate that thought, if they're not fighting, the armor is very, very expensive. On the other hand, if uh, you take the Amazonian, which not South American Amazon, but they wore armor. Different varieties, and uh, I believe the Mongol women also wore, uh, they fought, they wore protection. Uh, in the age of chivalry, women didn't fight. So there's no, no need to have 10 people working on something for a year for her to wear it. The part of it that is fun is when I make somebody else's day because it makes my day. That's, that's why I made the Diamondback Rattlesnake. That's why I made the Mermaid and I'll tear it apart and remake it. But I'm going to say that it's not necessarily my fantasy that keeps me interested in it. It's the people who want to do something in it. And the models who want to shoot in it, it's not necessarily a fantasy. I'm Lyle Miller known by a few other odd names. The, uh, when people recognize me anymore, it's, oh, you're that armor guy. So, so I answered armor guy, Lyle, hey you. I'm Lyle Miller, and I have the funnest hobby in the free world.